All right. Well, welcome everyone to the first edition of our security enablement series here. Uh, today we are joined by Ryan Corey, the co-founder and CEO of Cybrae. How are you doing today, Ryan? It's always great to be here. Oh, thank Isn't you. Isn't it? Yes, it's I think delightful. so. Yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. Um, so since this is all about security enablement, why don't you tell me kind of what that is? Security enablement, Thor, is a uh, new concept that we've seen emerging from the enterprise. Security enablement is basically putting the uh, putting rapid security skill development into the hands of your entire technical organization. So um, any basically enabling security skills in anyone that touches any part of the technological life cycle of any products, services, or applications that your company deploys. So that's just kind of making sure that security is something that everyone's thinking of kind of from the beginning and not as like an afterthought of uh, kind of development. Correct. Yeah, it's it's getting the it's getting security sort of uh, steps taken into every you know portion of the technological life cycle of any product, services, or applications. You know, we've kind of always looked at security as um, something that we probably treat a little bit too much after the fact mm -hmm. in 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 the technology that a company deploys, and it really shouldn't be that way. And and enterprise leaders, uh, enterprise technical leaders now are realizing that okay, look, we just went through this wave of let's call it security awareness mm -hmm. and user security awareness. You know, we we do it here. Everybody yeah. does it. Where every last endpoint that um, is on email or anything like that is trained on how not to. Uh, expose data or information about our organization mm -hmm. to to the outside world, namely, you know, by being aware of social engineering attacks or not clicking on phishing emails. Yeah. Right. So this new wave of security enablement is saying, wait a second, we've been treating security generally after the fact of our technological life cycle. Mm -hmm. Right. So after something's deployed, then we go and we take a look at it. We hand it over to the security team and say, here, pen test this or yeah. whatever, uh, or find vulnerabilities. And, and so that's, that's, um, it's basically worked for a lot of companies to, to date, but a lot of companies it hasn't. And, and, um, companies that have a little bit higher table stakes mm -hmm. when, when it comes to the data that they actually do possess organizations like healthcare organizations, that entire industry, there's yeah. a lot of really sensitive data there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it would be extremely costly for those organizations to have a data breach. Um, financial institutions are a great example. Yeah. So the leaders at these enterprise organizations are now saying, wait, we need to use an organization like Cybrary mm -hmm. to put cybersecurity skill sets into the hands of everyone from the coders who are writing the first line of code, right? We need them to understand concepts like cross-site mm -hmm. scripting. We need them to understand concepts like SQL injection, right? We need them, we need them to know OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities. Yeah. Right, but then all the way through that, the technological life cycle of the products, services, and applications would be like, okay, what? The, then the DevOps engineers mm -hmm. go and they stand these things up for us, and so those DevOps engineers need to be sort of DevSecOps enabled, yeah. right? They need to know security um, all the way through to the people that, let's say, host the data on a network, the network engineers, mm -hmm. the systems administrators, things like that. They need to understand security concepts as well. So that that's what we're seeing in the enterprise. It's it's a common trend now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I in your uh, blog post that we're going to link this video to, um, you talk about kind of how before it was how you mentioned that security is kind of an afterthought. You kind of build something and then you have the security team to look at it. And now we're seeing that that's just not really going to work anymore. That's not something that's scalable anymore, especially with giant organizations and companies. Correct. And so that's another really common theme that has brought about this sort of security enablement mm -hmm. Um uh, sort of wave or push. Um, security leaders are getting tired of sort of consulting out uh, their security professionals to yeah. the other IT teams in the organization. So when you know the the um, the coders develop a certain piece of of, of software, mm -hmm. the you know the security team is then handed this thing saying, "Hey, we built this. Go look at it." Right. Look for mm -hmm. vulnerabilities. Yeah. Pen test it. Right. And that's that's not good enough. And so the security teams in these organizations are already busy enough and they're also understaffed. Yeah. And so security leaders, and we've talked to so many CISOs mm -hmm. uh, over the past two years, and, and this, this is such a common theme. They're just tired of doing that because they're not getting their core, you know, their core efficient enough. Yeah. Their core responsibilities are not efficient enough because they're farming out 
yeah, their security they're teams. spending too much time doing extra things, kind of helping other teams out than focusing just strictly on kind of what they're there to do. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so um, with Cyber, I mean, how are we as a company, as Cyber, how are we especially poised to help with security enablement for other companies and other places looking to kind of start thinking about this a little sooner? Sure, sure. So uh, I'll start with framing the problem and why it hasn't been a thing okay. to date. Yeah. So we've kind of just been taught by the industry that like the way that you train um, a technical person on security concepts is to go send them out to a one week course at some place. Mm -hmm. So they have to travel and they have to take time off from their operations yeah. and and they have to go through a one week course on some random security concept yeah. for $7,000. Yeah. So that is so inefficient, so overly costly, mm -hmm. and it's like a smaller set of skills. Yeah. And so the inaccessibility of that has brought about this this rapid adoption that we're seeing from the enterprise of why they're coming to Cyberary to, uh, to to put security enablement into the hands of their entire technical orgs because it's extremely cost efficient. Yeah. Right. You have unlimited access so you can rapidly skill develop nonstop mm -hmm. um, and it's also available on demand so you're not taking somebody out of work yeah you know you don't have to take somebody off a week you don't yep. have to pay for them to travel you don't yep. have to pay for their food and everything and then they got to come back and play catch up with whatever they might have missed while exactly. they were gone exactly yeah um, so I mean as the you know CEO I mean how much is security on your mind like how often is that something that you're thinking of and that you're trying to implement here as well as kind of outside yeah uh, very much mm -hmm. on our minds always has been so one of our first hire hires here at, at the company when the company was less than what well, we were at like three employees one of our first hires was somebody who um, was highly trained in cybersecurity right yeah who could also write code for us so it was an engineer okay who was security enabled from the start. Um, and then it's been all the way through. You know, we started a security awareness uh, training program that's consistently delivered every month um, when we were probably eight people. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's consistently on your mind, especially when you're as public facing, forward facing as we are. Yeah, I mean, yeah, security training is still something that we still do here. It's still, we still get training videos uh, once a month. Shout out to Atata. Um, <laughs> yeah. Great videos, great uh, yeah, stuff. They're fantastic. Yep. Uh, human error always lets me know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> um, and he's good for a laugh. Yeah, yeah, always. Yeah, he is. Um, so, I mean, as as a CEO, I mean, what is the CEO's responsibility to the company as a whole in thinking about security and kind of implementing these things and pushing for these things? Because they are kind of sometimes real expensive kind of upfront but it can help you in the long run. You know, if some, you know, a hacker breach happens, I mean, that's definitely going to affect your business. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we're fortunate as an organization where we're not housing any, any truly sensitive data. Mm -hmm. The data that we have that's most relevant is what people are learning and how good they are at it. And that's not highly sensitive. Um, but I mean, I really fear for the, the CEOs of the healthcare organizations, the financial institutions and yeah. so on, um, who have some very serious data there. Mm -hmm. they're, they're gonna be the first ones to go if something happens. And so security should be on their mind from the start throughout every last portion of their organization, every last pocket, every last corner. And the pressure that they should be putting on the CIOs and the CISOs to work together mm -hmm. to put security enablement into their or entire organization uh, should be huge. It should be a lot of pressure. Yeah, I mean, we're still seeing um, a bunch of different hacks and everything. Um, uh, we'll be talking about the Equifax hacks in uh, one of our later episodes, yeah. but uh, I personally live in Baltimore and they just went through a huge hack, um, right. kind of shutting down all the city systems. So that's yeah, another I mean, great example, government organizations. Mm -hmm. um, now government actually, Thor, that's a good point that you bring up. Government has sort of already been thinking thinking about this yeah. security enablement concept. And it started with the DOD 8570, which is probably over a decade old now. Yeah. And it's changed names since then. It's now, it's now uh, the 8140. Okay. Uh, but it was an initiative where anybody that was going to be touching any sort of um, technical part of government network uh, or data set had to have an aligned security certification. And that's a decent start. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, what was funny was, it, just back to the point of how um, inefficient and overly costly it is to deploy something like that prior to the world where we have this unlimited catalog of security training courses on the yeah. web um, and hands-on security training products uh, like we do here at Cyberry mm -hmm. is the the 8570 got pushed out initially and it was like here's we have one year window everybody that's touching this has to have this aligned security certifications yeah certification process stunk right it was super super hard and mm -hmm. it and it put all of those 
uh, both government agencies and government contractors into this boat where they had to go send people off to that one week course to take yeah. them out of work. And it was just problematic. And they kept pushing the deadline every single year. And the deadline never really got met. Yeah. And so people had to work towards it and they were working towards it, but they had to lift these deadlines because it was just impossible to get to. Yeah. And then the new hiring coming in and people couldn't be onboarded in a security fashion because yeah. what if you hire somebody and they're only there six months and mm -hmm. right they're on a contract and the contract's going to end? It yeah, was impossible. you're always playing kind of catch up when always catch you know, up. you're doing those type of things. Yeah, yeah so that, that's kind of the roots of it. Government's always been thinking about that. Mm -hmm. They've just never, they haven't really cracked the code there, mm -hmm. uh, but we're seeing more and more government agencies adopt cyber area as well. Yeah, I think as kind of these... Uh, these hacks and stuff keep taking place, especially in like government facilities and yeah. like cities and stuff yeah. like that, that it's becoming more and more at the forefront of, kind of everybody's. was bad. Yes. I still haven't paid my water bill. Wow. So, you know, wow. It's been about two months. So, <laughs> free Jeez. showers, I guess. Yeah. But, free showers yeah. for everyone. Yeah. But, yeah. Not, it's not good. Wow. Not good. Yeah. I mean, is there anything else you want us to touch on or anything else you want to go over about security enablement uh, for the time being? No, I think that covers it. I mean, I would definitely welcome any sort of technical leaders and organizations to reach out to me directly and, and talk um, and have a conversation about security enablement. It's a fascinating sort of wave that we're going through right now. Mm -hmm. And, and the adoption is just insane. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for this kind of ongoing series that we're doing, um, kind of talking to different people and their insights in it and kind of what they think, um, you know, we can bring to the table as Cybrary and kind of what things they've witnessed yeah. themselves and in other businesses they've worked at. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very exciting. Cool. Well, thank you for being here, Ryan. Uh, always a pleasure kind of sitting down and talking to you. Thanks a lot, Thor. Talk Thanks. soon. Thor, 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 Thor.